Hi, and thank you. So my name is Dr. Katherine Cargis. I'm an OBGYN, I'm board certified, and I practice here in Sugarland, Texas. So I, it, I deliver babies, I perform surgery, and I went into OBGYN thinking that's what I was gonna do. But as I went through my training, I developed a special interest in the field of infertility. So only a small portion of the population is directly by, affected by infertility. And IVF is often touted as the cure for all causes of infertility. Now, the first test tube baby was actually conceived in 1976, and the first live-born child was actually born in 1978. I realize I don't have my clicker. So can we go to the, the next slide, please? Thank you. <laughs> you got to see the great pictures I have. So. So over 5 million pregnancies worldwide have been conceived with some form of artificial reproductive technology, which also includes IVF. So in the US and Europe, this amounts to about 1 to 3% of live births each year. Now you're probably sitting here thinking that's not really a huge number. Now that about 15% of the population at any time is dealing with infertility. So if you yourself have not been affected by infertility, which based on the size of this audience, that's maybe only a small subset directly affected, I bet you probably have a friend or family member who's gone through something like this. What you see with these people is that being pregnant is everywhere. Who, who has what bump? Who has how many babies? Being pregnant, it's everywhere. And for these people who can't conceive, being infertile is simply devastating. In working with couples for the past five years, what I've seen is that marriages and relationships fall apart, and women also often say that they feel like they can't do the one thing that they were made to do. They feel like the simple question of, oh, by the way, do you have kids yet? It's about time. This causes pain. I met a couple trying to conceive their second child when I was doing an extra year of training focusing on infertility in Omaha, Nebraska. Their first child was conceived by IVF, and if you haven't had a close friend or family member that has gone through this process, you're probably not really aware of what goes on. When patients see these specialists to go through IVF, what it means is that they failed the basic workup with an OBGYN such as myself. So what we do is we will generally go through, and what I learned in my training is we'll go through and we will do a basic workup, and if a couple hasn't been able to conceive in about three to six months, then we send them on to one of these specialists. Now the specialists are trained, they have some additional tools that we don't have, and they're trained to do an additional workup to help people get pregnant. Now what I see very often is that very quickly they're shuffled through to IVF. There's not really much of a workup and not really much treatment. Now, IVF, it's expensive technology. Not everybody can afford it. This really is, it's expensive and not most insurances cover this, although more are starting to cover it, but not everybody has access to this simply because of the price. There's also a risk of multiples such as twins and triplets. These pregnancies are a lot more complicated versus having just one baby inside, so you have a much riskier pregnancy. Some people also have moral or religious objections to doing IVF, so it's simply not even part of a possibility that they can do, so they feel stuck. IVF itself really isn't natural. That's a sneak preview. Um, so IVF itself really isn't even natural. Women are pumped full of many hormones, and they go through an egg harvesting procedure that's very invasive in order to obtain these eggs, mix it in a dish with um, the sperm, and then re-implant it back into the woman's body. So this really isn't a very natural process. Now the couple that I met in Omaha, they'd gone through this entire process of IVF and the egg harvesting, and later on after they had their beautiful daughter, they started to think about having another baby. And they said, we just don't really know that we can go through this again. There's gotta be another way. So they started doing some research and came across the same doctor in Omaha, the doctor that I had found about, and they started doing some research on him. What he does is he caters to couples who for various reasons can't do IVF and some who have even gone through and failed IVF and felt like they didn't have any other options. So this couple, interestingly, they're from Houston, um, they were also in Omaha and we met up there together. Now when I was in Omaha, I learned a lot about the woman's cycle, things that I hadn't even learned about in medical school. So guys, always fertile, always fertile. Women, we are only fertile for a certain period of time during the month. It's not all the time. The cycle can vary from month to month and things even such as stress can affect the cycle and affect woman, when a woman is fertile and when she's ovulating. Now, 
I learned about the basics of fertility, things I hadn't even learned in medical school or during my residency when I was up in Omaha. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about why I didn't learn these things, that's a whole nother talk, but really to talk to you about how there's a whole lot of basics, there's a basic principle that's being missed, and IVF is touted as the solution for everything. So I, like the couple that I met up there, I wanted to go up there to learn more. I wanted to know why women aren't getting pregnant. I wanted answers instead of just a one-size-fits-all approach. So as this couple went through their evaluation, it became clear that the female partner of this couple had several health issues. It became clear that she had a condition called endometriosis, which causes very painful menstrual cycles, can cause some other things, and it can also cause infertility. So she underwent surgery to remove the endometriosis. She went through a very carefully monitored cycles with lower doses of medications and hormones to help her ovulate better. She carefully tracked her cycles. She paid close attention to when she was ovulating, and she and her husband got pregnant naturally, and they had a son just a few months after surgery, after having been told for years that they couldn't get pregnant, after having gone through IVF. So here's their little boy, and then I actually was able to deliver uh, their daughter for them just a few months ago, actually. So now they have two beautiful children um, conceived naturally. So I'm not here to argue for or against IVF. My point, really, and why I'm here is to bring up a rather old idea that women, their, desire, their bodies are designed to function, to conceive, and bear children. So when a couple can't conceive, it really only makes sense to try to figure out why. So when I first opened my practice, there, we have to set up an office, we need supplies, we need scissors, things like that. And the supply guy came to my office and he said, what do you guys do here? And I said, well, you know, OBGYN clinic, do prenatal care, deliver babies, do surgery. We also help some people with infertility. And he said, well, that's interesting. I'm like, okay. <laughs> comes back a few, few weeks later, asks the same question. I'm like, okay, all right. So third time he comes back and he's like, all right, doc, I gotta tell you, my wife and I, we have a beautiful little girl. We've been trying for about four to five years to get pregnant with our second. We just can't get pregnant. Do you think you could help us? I said, well, absolutely. You know, I, what I want you to do, I want you and your wife to go home. I want you to track your cycles for a couple of months, two months, make an appointment in two months to see me. We're going to go over the data and help figure out uh, a plan to move forward to help you guys get pregnant. They actually called me a month later with a positive pregnancy test. And they brought in the data. We sat down and looked at the month worth of data that they had. We talked about the past couple years. What we think was happening is that they're probably just missing the fertile window completely. So here is their little girl that I was able to deliver just about 10 months after first opening my practice, after they tried for five years to get pregnant. So if you think about it, we really are green in so many aspects of our lives. We drink out of BPA-free bottles, you drive your little low emissions vehicle, pay a little extra for hormone-free meat, we recycle, ride our bikes places instead of taking public transportation. We're green in so many aspects of our lives. People have literally been procreating since the beginning of time. This is something that's natural and is supposed to happen. So it only makes sense to think about fertility in the same manner. Go back to the basics of how we function as humans. Go back to the basics of how fertility and conceiving and getting pregnant actually works. Where is the system broken? Why can't the infertile patients get pregnant and conceive like the fertile ones can. My couples who come to see me after having gone through other avenues of trying to get pregnant, they tell me that this approach makes them feel a little more human. They feel a little bit more like people and individuals instead of just ends into themselves. They feel like this solution tailors, tailors all of the answers to their specific needs. I met another couple. They'd been trying to get pregnant for 15 years. Because of how her husband's job worked, they'd traveled all over the country, and everywhere that they would go, every new state, they would go visit the reproductive specialist and the OBGYNs in their town. They kept getting the same answer over and over again. We don't know why you can't get pregnant. Why don't you just do IVF? They weren't satisfied with this answer. They wanted more. They wanted to know why they couldn't get pregnant. They came to see me on advice from, I delivered some of uh, their sister's baby, and she said, you know, my sister told me I had to come see you. You know, what, what do you think about what's gone on? Here's my medical records. So I looked through her medical records, and I said, you know, the one thing you haven't had yet is a surgery to actually look inside and see what might be going on. So we, she said, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm like at my wit's end. I just want to know why I can't get pregnant. 
Well, it turns out she had a lot going on inside that couldn't be seen from the outside that was keeping her from getting pregnant. So at the surgery, we fixed that. She got pregnant just two to three months after surgery. She called me with a positive pregnancy test. My whole office was ecstatic. We just couldn't believe it. And here's a little girl. She's now two years old, 15 years in the making. They were waiting. I cry every time I tell this story. <laughs> but they did. They finally had their little daughter, and I keep in touch with them. They live a couple states over. And then they're just so absolutely thrilled that they have this little girl. So I want to change how we think about infertility. Infertility is not the disease. There's something causing the infertility. If we think about a cough or a fever, maybe we have the flu. Infertility is the same thing. There's something causing the infertility. There's some underlying root cause. We want to look at the problem, to work with nature, and to achieve the beautiful outcome of taking home a baby for these infertile couples. Thank you. Thank you.